Reverend Crystal Cox, Lattice Church, Port Townsend. I'm going to talk to you today about, um, <coughs> about, um, <laughs> San Juan Island. <coughs> so, I went to San Juan Island. I, I moved to Port Townsend in 2012, and I wanted to, I'd always heard about Friday Harbor in San Juan Island, that you could see the orcas from the shore, and I always wanted to go there. <coughs> And then long about 2016, I um, was in a hotel in Port Townsend. I had been living in hotels at least a year then, maybe two. I think a little over a year. And it was storming, like big time stormy. Electricity went out in the hotel. And I was like, ah, ready for a big old adventure. So, <coughs> I got my little red truck. And I went down to the ferry, because uh, you take the ferry over to the, <coughs> um, Coopville, Oak Harbor, all that, and then down over to Anacortes, and then you take a ferry from Anacortes over to San Juan Island. So it takes a few hours. Okay, well, I got down to the ferry, and um, because of the electrical issues, yeah, so because of the electrical issues, uh, and the huge storms, the ferry wasn't running. Um, what was it? Okay, well, I'm confusing a couple incidences because there was one time I was the front person on the ferry and the, and the wave just... Okay, anyway. Well, this particular day, it wasn't running. So I drove... Oh, yeah, I know. Right, okay, so... I, Port, the Port Townsend Ferry wasn't running, so I, I flew. I drove 40 minutes to Edmonds, <coughs> Kingston Edmonds Ferry. So I, I took, <sighs> no, I have not been drinking or smoking. Okay, so I took that ferry because of weather in Port Townsend. And then when I got to the other side, <laughs> I drove the back roads, I didn't want to get on the freeway, I'm not a freeway girl, to Muckleshoot, I think, or Clinton, or, anyway, there's a ferry there. But the Edmonds Ferry, the Kingston Edmonds Ferry, was where I was the first in line, and the way, the water was coming up over the top. It was just such a massive storm, it was so cool. And, um, so then I got over to Muckleshoot or whatever, and then I took another ferry over to Oak Harbor. And then I drove to Anacortes, and I think over Deception Pass and Cookville, drove through all that. And then um, I went to the Anacortes Ferry, and they said, well, it would be like a three-hour wait. And so I um, just got in line, and I watched movies, and I laid ahead of my laptop, and then I, I walked around. Um, it's, it's got a really cool, like a swamp waterway trail there and different, um, um, you know, birds and things you might find in such a place. And so <clears throat> it was just really just nice and peaceful and I was watching my movies. Then it was an hour ferry ride, I believe it was an hour, hour and a half maybe, from Anacortes to San Juan Island. And on the way, I had booked a hotel, um, or the, the church had booked a hotel for me. And um, so when I got into town, it's straight, it's kind of straight up. And then um, I found my way to the hotel. Just this really cool hotel. It was so amazing, such a relief. It was already dark, so I didn't really get a feel, but I loved, I kind of loved where the, the ferry came in. And then um, the hotel was just so precious and wonderful. And, there was like a fake fireplace and there was a big TV and there was, um, you know, refrigerator and it was just so peaceful and quiet and, um, little trees in the yard and stuff. And, um, I ended up staying there probably a couple weeks. Um, so, uh, then I moved to a hotel where there was a, a big suite. Like I had two full rooms and a giant TV and a bedroom and a living room and a kitchen and a it was like um, $200 a night. Stayed there for like six weeks. I'd have much rather had that money in my pocket, but long, long stories. You know, and alone. Um, throw that in there. <coughs> okay, so 
Well, I don't remember my first day. don't remember any order of any of this, but it's the most beautiful place I have ever been in my life. There is mountains on every side of the island, all right? So you have the Cascades, you have mountains in Canada, you have the Rocky Mountains. You have, you can see over to Victoria, Canada, you can see the Olympic Mountains. Each side of the island has another beach and um, each its own u unique beef. Be beach. <laughs> uh, English camp, for example, is, um, is kind of like plains, right? So you got grass and you got these old buildings and then you got um, beach and all these trails and stuff. Uh, the, there's a place called British Camp, and this is because, you know, they both had kind of occupied it back in the day, blah, 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 blah. Um, occupying Mother Earth. With all these little games. I digress. Anyway, English Camp, oh my god, spectacular, right? So you're driving down, and this road winds around in the dirt, <laughs> as roads do. It's a dirt road. And then um, the trees are just amazing. I stopped a couple times just to walk uh, among the trees. Just It just was so beautiful and so magical. And then you get down there, and, and it's right on the water. And there's a whole bunch of old fruit trees and old gardens and um, buildings. And it's just really lush and wonderful and magical. Uh, Fourth of July beach. There's just beaches all over. And um, just stunning, right? The mountains just stunning. And you can see the orchids from the, sh the shore lime kiln um park state park there and i hiked around that to where the lime uh you can see the rocks with the lime in it a uh, roche harbor used to have a place to um, develop that back in the day and near roche harbor like there's just so many wonderful spots but there's this uh it's just magical right this guy built this thing i forget what they call it but I have um, pictures. I, I might put some pictures to some links. Uh, in the description, I will put links to photo albums of San Juan Island. And it's these big pillars. There's like six of them in a circle. And then a table with six people. And this guy built it, like, I think is his burial or whatever uh, for his family. Um, he excommunicated one of the kids because he went to the different church or whatever. So you can see one of the chairs removed. But it's just this beautiful thing in this park. Um, I forget what they call it. But it's kind of like the King's Round Table, and it's really big, and it's just in the woods, right? And, and it's a, about a mile in, uh, Roche Harbor, back behind Roche Harbor, it's just beautiful. Now, Roche Harbor um, has uh, a little store, a cute little store, um, boats, uh, people live around there, and they come in there, they live on like Stewart Island, or all the Pearl Island, all the little islands off of there. <coughs> and... Um, uh, cool little restaurants, kind of cool little village, and a bunch of little townhouses and and old churches. They had weddings quite often when I was there. I'd watch the weddings and I'd see the gardens and um, um, just just beautiful and um, just really loved it. Explored all these places alone. Which, anyway, I uh, I left there in 2016. Um, I was there probably like four months or so and I thought I'd go back and live there and I still kind of want to do that um I just kind of came back back to Port Townsend and that's that's the deal but I digress again so downtown has um it's really cool old-fashioned tavern tavern called Herb Herb's Tavern and it's been there like forever and so it kind of has that old style of the old honky-tonks you know with wood and things on the wall and really good burgers and beers and but it, but it's a kind of a cleaner. Um, there's not really smoke in there, so it has that old-fashioned. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's so much bigger in my mind, you know. Incredible burgers, incredible fries, incredible beer, music, just cool people. And there was there's several music venues downtown, and art, and um, um, you know, restaurants and. Uh, uh, a lot around the orcas because they they do tours to go out um, and see them and like I said from Lime Kiln you can see them from the shore and that is you know there's madrones and there's you can see uh, seals and sea lions and otters and um, just the rock formations and the water and and the climate you know kind of different on each side of the island you know the, the wind and um, it's just amazing and I'd go and sit the, down by the lighthouse on one end 
there's this spot and it's kind of like a compass and it, it points to the different mountain peaks it's kind of engraved in the rock uh, of the Cascades all the different mountains and I just I just love it and these little pools of water and uh, it, it's the most magical place that I've ever been to on earth and um, so why am I not living there well I will be um, yeah planned on it plan on it but downtown Port Townsend is pretty darn magical pretty darn magical it's a portal in uh, there's the Lumi tribe uh, prophecy which uh, is about, like, say, 6,000 years ago, allegedly. Uh, you know, when the white man came, then all the, the natives spread to all over the world uh, to preserve their bloodline because they were being slaughtered or whatever, and that we are being called back. Those of us who were connected to that energy are being called back. Uh, it's a Lumination prophecy. Lum the Lumination is one of the tribes off of these islands, and there's also, like, Lumi Island, L-U-M-M-I. So I felt the calling here. I'd never been here before. I was here, came here in 2012, visited, and a few months later I just took a 25-foot U-Haul and drove here. Didn't even have a place to stay. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it is an island, right? So in order to go like Costco shopping and stuff like that, you take the ferry. And people take the ferry every day for work. I didn't. Like, I don't care. I used to be freaked out when I'd first go to Hawaii in my early 20s at being island bound, but now I'm like, island bound? Yeah, you know. Because <coughs> um, I could still get stuff from Amazon. So instead of two day, it might be three day. But, you know, Seattle's not too far. So I could get things from Amazon all the time. Um, and, and there is a local food co op, and the store is really good, and it's old fashioned where everything closes around six. I love that. You know, it's not like this 24 hour go, 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 go. I'm, and there's this awesome freaking pizza place there, best pizza I ever had. And these folks are from, I think they're from Germany. Um, it's just amazing pizza. And uh, just the seating out in the courtyard was amazing. This um, picnic table with these benches and this over thing. Yeah, you're going to have to see the picture list in the link. Link pictures. Um, San Juan Island, so Friday, so on San Juan Island, it's about 30 miles across or the length. So you got Roche Harbor, you got False Bay. Oh my gosh, beautiful! The whole water goes out, and so it's a False Bay, right? And um, kind of got a smell. But the mountains, like the the Olympic Mountains, amazing. Uh, it's just stunning, heartwarming, beautiful. I just, I just love, I just loved it. Um. Yeah, it was August, so I was there like, yeah, March through September. And so, um, and most of the hotels don't have AC. And so I ended up moving into the last month a hotel that was like $50 a night and did have AC. So the, the bigger ones didn't. This is tiny room, just barely a bed, you know, a little microwave, a little, uh, just tiny, tiny. Um, and this was still when I was hotel living before I spent five years in a car. Um, then I learned what tiny was, right? Um, so, San Juan Island, lots of, uh, you know, bed and breakfast, lots of tourism stuff, uh, and people are very impatient in traffic, you know, because there's one, the road around, and I like to tour around, e even when I'm not a tourist, e you know, when I lived somewhere for decades, I, I love to look at things, I'm always ready for a picture, I'm always ready for something to happen, and going on, and taking cool pictures of things, and people that are always, you know, on your butt, like hurry, hurry! They got, they gotta hurry up and get somewhere. Even when it's a dead end road or a park, like gotta get there, gotta get there, I gotta hurry up to recreate. And um, there's a lot of that there. Like they don't want you to drive slow, so it's not exactly a peaceful little island, you know. Whereas a lot of like Hawaii, for example, they're like, oh yeah, we're in Hawaii time, you know, we're like laid back. It's not. But Let's see, bicycling, but there's no like bicycle paths as much like Port Townsend's a bicycle community where there's a bike lane for everything it's all over there you know you're kind of on the main road you got like you know um, I'm not really a bicyclist but it just kind of wasn't a thing um, they have uh, some pot shops they have um, yeah all kinds of different restaurants and um, I really plan on describing this more but the point is is that it is magical 
it has beaches on every part. Oh my gosh, this other one, just nobody was there. Just this, this, this little beach, and the and there was a bunch of geese, and I just sat on this rock, and this just beautiful, pristine location, just all by myself. I've experienced that so much over the last, oh my god, 50 years. <laughs> I've just turned 50, so 40. But because my growing up too, I'd go down to the what we call Lake Cucanooster down at the reservoir and just look at the Rocky Mountains and play in the water, play in the sand and cook my meals and ride my motorcycle and always just traveled around and seen things alone. Even when I was in a long-term relationship, I traveled around in the woods by myself and I took my adventures, you know, I took my adventures on the rocks. <laughs> um, and so I recommend you go see San Juan Island or you come visit me there sometime. Um, kayaking, boating, there's calm waters and bays, and then you can go out to the bigger water and all kinds of different boats. And there's, oh, the the flight planes. So that you can, you can take um, a little plane and connect with like the bigger planes in Seattle, like at SeaTac Airport. But um, the float planes would come in and they go right up to the dock. And so I just sit and watch those and then, oh my God, these burgers, right? So there's this little burger stand and they got what they call, you know, Texas toast or whatever as the burger bun and just amazing burgers and milkshakes and I'd get those and just go sit on the dock and eat them. Oh, there's this, there's this uh, sea lion, no, it's not a sea lion, it's a sea, sea, harbor seal called Popeye and it's got one eye and I've seen it several times, it's adorable. They have like these where you can buy fish and stuff like right on the water. But the Popeye, they did a bronze sculpture because it's like, you know, like a town icon or whatever. And so that's kind of neat. I met some neat people um, like the bookstore and um, antique store and different bakeries and things and a really cool used bookstore. Uh, you know, I love those kind of things. And um, I channeled for someone. On this, I met this woman and I just started just telling her stuff like her dead husband was talking to me. It was the first time that it happened to where it just shot through me and the stuff I said was kind of outrageous, which is, you know, unique for me. <laughs> Not, but I was surprised that, uh, yeah, I was surprised. Um, okay, so, and sometimes, er, well, sometimes, like every day, I go down and get the ice cream cone. The ice cream cone. I wander around with that and they get to know me. They're like, oh, you come in every day. And I'm like, yep, come in every day. I like to experience a place over weeks or months where I go to the same places every day. I get to know the people. If it's hotels, you know, you get to know the people who work there. You get to know regular life. And I've always done that. Like, even in my 20s, I'd go to Hawaii. Like, I'd work for the forestry, and then I'd go to Hawaii and, you know, just camp or whatever and, and be on my unemployment seasonal work. And then um, I would get a feeling for the locals. Like, I would hang out. I wouldn't be like a tourist of, where's McDonald's? And we're, you know, I fit in with the culture. And you stay long enough to do that. I stay long enough to get to know people and people to know you, and then you move on. And I did that often. And then sometimes I would go and get um, like just a pint of haagen at the store downtown and just go sit on the dock and eat it. And then I'd go to the movie. And um, this just, or you know, and plus I'm kind of, I consider myself a street preacher, meaning that I don't be like, okay, the blood of Christ and you will die if you don't, no, not like that. But where I just kind of wander around and I tell spirit, you know, I'm available for to answer prayers and I'm available to people and I'll be sitting on a bench and someone will just sit down and something will come up. And I, I do that everywhere I go. And I, it's kind of my version of being a street preacher, but of no matter the religion, no matter what anybody's into, I just kind of, uh, help raise their vibration, help them move through an energy. But even sitting in my frequency, I've done so much work on myself and raising my vibration that it kind of tunes them. And, um, and I just love that, and it just feels so good. It, it's, it's lonely work, but, um, and so yeah, I met different people. I met this woman there from England. Um, she had lived there for like 10 years and um, got citizenship and stuff, and she married some guy that lived there. And um, I met, you know, I just met quite a few people. I didn't like develop friendships. I developed a knowing by seeing people every day, or you know, like the place I go get coffee pretty much every day and bagel and you kind of get to know people and lifestyles and then you move on. And then, yeah, I collect the data for my books and my, just all my, like, this character, who's this person, um, what their life represents. And as part of, yes, my writing, as part of my preaching, as part of just my whole study of society and people and helping to raise the consciousness of other earth and people, 
I, I just like to really get into that. And so, um, and yeah, it is lonely. I cut my finger one night. It's a tomato, like a slice in a tomato and all. And I went down to the hotel desk and it was, um, she asked me if I wanted her to take me to the hospital or whatever. And I didn't, but, um, it, it's vulnerable when something happens when, you know, like that, because, um, well, that was something until this, <laughs> until this guy here shot out at me when I was moving into this place and I got a concussion and, uh, Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think I'd ever <laughs> bled so much from my head then. Those are the times when you feel like being alone is a little bit like, eh. But pretty much my whole life, I've been alone. I don't have kids. Um, I've had pets at different points, but I'm just free. And there's um, pros and cons to that, mostly pros. But it didn't feel like that. You know, I was going through a lot. I didn't really want to be living in hotels and moving every day and not knowing what was going on. And um, I got my wish. <laughs> That ended and I got to live in a car, so I got to experience those levels. So I definitely would be going back to Salmon Island, and I recommend you go there too. Um, there's a state campground that's really, really beautiful. I, different people would come in and they'd be looking out on the water. I'd loan them my binoculars, and um, you know, like I just go somewhere, and I'm then the house, I'm the shore, and then the people just ebb and flow. Because people come and look at something for a minute, or they come into town for a day or three. I immerse in it. You know, I remember this one night I was walking around downtown and um, I just, it was really dark and I just stopped and I went. And it was this big buck deer just like right there. And then um, um, in Port Townsend, I bonded with raccoons. I, we don't have those in Montana. I'll tell you those stories another day. But on San Juan Island, it's the fox. I had never experienced such an amazing, playful energy and experience with, with foxes. Um, black ones, you know, I I'd come outside the back of the hotel and this black one, he'd just run and play and roll and I was going to say laugh, but it was like he was laughing and playing. He'd run up the hill and, you know, kind of like a puppy, you know, or a very domesticated animal, but they were wild foxes. And it was just so cute and amazing. And then sometimes I'd be walking at night and then you just look down and they're just like, just sleeping, just in the, just a cuddled little ball right side by side the sidewalk. And it would just be so precious. And then one night when I went out and I saw that, I also saw a ship. So right now there's new technology for the triangle crafts that are, um, um, it's a hover technology, uh, teleports, whatever. Anyway, we have that. So there's, yes, there's uh, aliens, but, but, you know, there's obvious, there's life in other realms and planets and dimensions that come in here in their ships. Okay, that's one thing. This may have been that. But I was standing, I was just hanging out, I was sitting on this rock, and I was kind of like laying on this grass, yeah, like at midnight. And um, I seen this light, and I thought, well, I thought it was weird, and I thought it was something that was going to move. But it didn't, it just, it just stood there. And I thought, okay, well, it's just a hill, and I'm just seeing like a yard light on a hill, even though I didn't remember a hill being in that location. And so then I started to walk away, and then it moved. And it went over me, and it no sound at all, right? And it was a triangle craft, so it had, you know, the two lights and the one light. And then it, it just went over me, really quiet. And I could just see the lights. And so that was kind of interesting. And then, um, so yeah, the fox uh, and the deer was pretty neat. Oh, and this one, one of the parks, um, I think it's from the 4th of July park, so I don't remember the name of it, but thousands of rabbits, hence the fox, right, probably the island, but it was like, wow, right, just like, <coughs> they were like grains of sand, they were just everywhere, and so, um, <coughs> you know, such as rabbits do. So, um, that's a little bit about San Juan Island, so I recommend you go there. And um, the orcas are pretty spectacular. Um, they have like a orca museum. I'm more into nature, you know, but um, trees. I love trees. I, I went uh, years where I would just I connect with different trees at my heart level. I stand the height of my heart and I send heart energy to the tree and I accept energy. And I send the tree information and I get information. I'm definitely a tree hugger. And, and I do that all over the world. And all over the world that I've done this with and other things, I'll sit down and take like a visual image of like, 
um, a statue, uh, you know, I take kind of a mental note and I can go there at any time and I can smell the smells and I can hear the sounds and I can, um, you know, like in Hawaii once, St. Germain, St. Germain, the statue, and I was sitting there, you know, praying under this, this giant mountain and I was just at this bed and breakfast, well, no, no fucking breakfast, <laughs> I just, I didn't have a car or nothing I'm in the middle of nowhere or some room that the church had rented me because I just kind of kept moving and I, um, uh, you know, the mountain where they say the sleeping giant uh, in Kauai, and it was just just beautiful and amazing. It was kind of traumatic. I mean, I got, I fell down, I've got, I didn't get chased by dogs, but I thought I was, but um, fell down and cut my leg, and um, just cool things, but just, oh my gosh, trials and tribulations. But the point was not that. The point is that we gather this stuff up and we can go there at any time. And even when we don't have our body, we still have our consciousness. And so, I can experience all these places that I've been and things that I've seen right now from this version of me, this consciousness. So when I cross over, I'll have access to every version of me in every realm and every different type of body and everything I experienced. My consciousness will be whole. I'll have all those experiences. I can feel them. I can taste them. I can feel the air. I can smell it. I can touch. Um, yeah, physical touch is wonderful. Um, in, in incarnating in a human body, but we're gathering all these experiences that we know what that feels like. And so I can go, like I can travel all over San Juan Island right now in my mind and smell the smells and see what's there. And You know, I just sat for hours and hours at so many different spots all around the island. And um, it's just a spectacular place and um, glad I got to share it with you, whoever you are. Whoever you are watching this, you probably know me. Because otherwise, you'd be bored to tears. You'd be like, <laughs> mm, "Love you, bye bye."